What up, folks? Okay. I want to do something for beginner guitarists out here. You know, if there's any that watch my channel. <clears throat> hey, my buddy Josh, maybe you'll get some information out of this too, my friend. Let's cue the amp up. We're going to keep this on clean. We're going to drop D right now. Let's go up to standard. Guitar. Basic chords, man. Basic chords. There's certain chords you need to learn. You know, and some of them are simple. Some of them are really simple. Some of them are really difficult. <laughs> the dreaded F chord is the one that will stop most people from trying to learn the guitar. Once they get to that chord, that's when they want to stop, give it up, can't freaking, I can't do this. That mentality is something you don't need to have when you start to learn an instrument. There's no can't when it comes to learning this stuff and learning the guitar. You can do it. It's just going to take a while. So, for guitar, for what I was taught, my dad taught me this stuff. Drew it out on a piece of paper. You can pull yourself up a diagram of these chords online on Google. You can save you a, a, a photo of it or screenshot it from somewhere. You might still be able to find a poster chart that you can hang on your wall in your room or your studio, wherever you guys are trying to learn. So, you have your A major chord, C, D, E, F, and then G major. My dad taught me those. He skipped the B major chord because it is a bar chord. And that will come that will come later in the guitar journey. Now, E major. Open E and high E in the B string are all open strings. Your first finger goes here, try to play as close to the fret as you can. Not directly on top of the fret, or you're going to put grooves in your frets. There. Your ring finger goes right under it on the fourth string. And then pointing finger goes on the G string, first fret. Pop my pinky down so you guys can see it. don't want to grip it because you don't want to squeeze really hard because you're going to you're going to limit what you can do here and it might put pressure on your muscle that runs under your wrist here and cause carpal tunnel you don't want that so you just put your fingers down there and squeeze down just enough to get the notes to sound now if you choked up like this and your thumb's way over here extended, you're gonna get. And it's like, man, I can't get, I can't get these. Rotate your hand. Let your thumb kind of be your guide to where you want about that much of your thumb showing, just so you can open it up here and you have this V. Right in here, there would be like a V. You can see a light in there. And on this side of your hand too, if you look underneath your neck, you, you'll be able to see light. You should be able to see light. So that's good. You don't need to move your hand much more than that. Your thumb kind of rests up here, you know, it's nice. It's supporting your hand. And it's gonna take time with these chords. You have to do this 
every day for 30 minutes, an hour, just go through, go through learning your chords. So that's E. The next chord will be C major. Third fret, fifth string. Second fret, fourth string. Open G string. First fret, B string. Oop, I picked the wrong, I picked the wrong one. I put my finger on the wrong one. Look at me trying to teach. Now on this chord, you don't want to sound your low E. The low E is not included in it. You want to start from your fifth string. And I have a bad habit. My finger just wants to kind of hang out right here, my pinky. And with this one, the same thing applies. If you choke up really high on the neck with your thumb, or if you squeeze really hard, you're going to push your strings out of tune. And on your picking, when you when you strum, it's not it's not really hard, just lightly. And let your pick kind of fall through the strings. Always keep this this motion here diagonal. I don't typically do this when I'm playing because I'm not thinking about it. I have to subconsciously think about it. And now we got D major. High E is the second fret with the bad finger. And then B string third fret. And then third string second fret. And now, like I said, only start from here, from the D. You don't want to hit your A. And you can, it fits, but the E, if you hit all of them, it's going to be weird. It's going to sound like, that's not right. So just start from your D string down, fourth string down. And this one, you can kind of choke your thumb up. you can do unless your hand is too far turned towards your body then you're gonna choke out your high strings you'll choke out all of them so just rotate your wrist stay relaxed and you'll have the D chord oh my wrist popped that's not good now we're gonna go to G major Think about this C shape here. Get this freaking pinky out of the way. I hate how it does that. Think about this. Two, three. Those are the frets. Second fret, third fret. Bring them up to the low E and the A string. Like that. I'll do it with these two fingers. I always do it with these two. Everything's open. High E on third, third fret. That's a G that I was taught when my dad started teaching me. But I do it with this. I put my pinky on the high E and my ring finger on the B string third fret. It's just a fuller sounding chord to me. And now we go to the chord that stops us all, the F chord. Fourth string on the third fret. Third string on the second. Then you're gonna have to bar the B and the E with your first finger. This is where we get stopped because a lot of people, when they're first learning, they don't have the pressure in their hand they're not bar pushing down hard enough and you get this and it's just like damn it man I can't do this you know but the more you practice this stuff the more it'll it'll start to it'll start to become muscle memory 
and you don't have to think about it so much. All right, now, I'll take you through now some minor chords that I was taught from my dad when I was first learning at 13, 14 years old. The first one we're going to do is E minor. Sorry I'm rocking. It's my ADHD. I kind of get like this. It's just like your E major chord, but you're going to take this finger off and leave your third string open. Get it right up on the, right up on the guitar. It's just inside the second fret. And then A minor, drop these two down two strings to the D and the G, and then B on the first fret. That's A minor. And then what else we got? Let's see, D minor. It's just like your major chord. But then you've got open D, second on the G string, third on the B, first on the high E. That gives you D minor. Then the other minor chords I never really learned. <laughs> Except for bar chord forms like C minor. D minor here. F minor. Man. G minor. A minor, B minor, C minor. I learned those through tab, didn't even know what they were. I just knew they were bar chords. So now, what can we do next here? Since I'm kind of teaching a little bit. Uh, voicings. Voicings of A minor. That's your open voice. Your open voicing is right here. These are what's known as cowboy chords. Your next A minor voicing will be 7th fret on the D string. Bar the 5th fret on the G, the B, and the E. That's A minor there. And then the next one. So you got 14 on the D string, 14 on the G string, 13 on the B, 12 on the E. That's A minor as well. Then I think there's also one right here. Yeah, third on nine, second on 10, first on eight. more I'm just not very good at voicings <laughs> now E minor that's your open voice your cowboy chord bar chord E minor okay here's a voicing for you it's easy it's simple G on the 9 B on the 8 or 8 on the B, and 7 on the high E. Can't use the D, can't use the A, but you can use the E. And as you become proficient with these chords, you know, how are you going to ever be able to change between chords? What you would do you can strum the chord. Say you want to go from E to C. You can do that, you know, but you're going to be kind of like that for a little while, you know, you're not going to be able to get it perfectly every time. The more you do it, the more your hands are going to learn it. 
your muscle memory was gonna kick in and you're gonna be good. So how would you build that? How would you build the muscle memory? Don't even strum the guitar, turn the volume down. Turn the volume down and just finger the chords. E, C, E, C, E, C, E, C. And the more you do that, the more that motion gets worked in, the more you're going to be able to, or faster you're going to be able to switch the chords. The same thing applies with every chord. It doesn't matter what chord you're trying to go to. If you're going from A to D. Okay, let's talk about this A chord here for a second. A major. I can't believe I forgot that one. So that's the way I was taught to do it. To bar all of this. The low E is excluded. Don't use it. A open. And then 2 on the D. D a G on the 2. B on the 2. And then this should be open, i.e. But I leave it out when I do this, this form of the chord, the way I was taught. Most people that learn A, they learn it like this. Two there, two there, and two here, and leave this string actual, actually open on the high E. I don't do it this way. That's just me. It's just how I was taught. And I've seen people, I've played with people that do it this way, and I'm like, what chord are you using? And they're like, oh, it's just A, dude. <laughs> you know? And I feel stupid. And it's like, what, really? See, I can't, I can't do that comfortably. See? So I just do it this way. So that's A minor. Here's your voicing for the major chord. D on the 7, G on the 8, and then B on the 5, and then high E5. There we go. And then here. Oh man, this one, this one might be like something like that. I don't know. <laughs> It's just like the two up here. It's just on the 14th fret. And dude, I can't do that one. Well, now I can, but I can feel it. This finger, my pinky, wants to touch this high E string. Wow, well, that seems really falling apart, isn't it? And now we'll add some chords in for intermediate players. The bar chords, you know, A, my, A major. A minor. G major, G minor, F, to E, or B, to E major, to E minor. Like I said, you know, if you, the video doesn't help much, you can look all of this up on Google. You know, I just wanted to add this to my videos because... I've done lots of like instructional stuff, but I've never done a basic chord instructional thing. So now let's get into add nine chords. A minor add nine. It's a very pretty, pretty chord. So what do we have going on here? You're using the A minor. There's your normal A minor. So you got your root, your fifth, right? Yeah, fifth of E, fifth of A is E. So root, fifth, I think that's octave, to minor third. You're gonna take the octave note, the G on the two, bring it out. That makes the ninth. So you got your ninth, and then major third, or minor third. Dude, that's really dissonant. Another voicing of that chord.
difficult, man. Satriani type stuff. So, low E on the 5. 7 on the A. 9 on the D. The rest is barred by your index finger on the 5th. Now, the major version of that sucks. It's hard. Ooh, that cramps me up. I don't like that. <laughs> what other ones do I know? I know this chord, but I have no idea what it's called. It's some kind of E. Got nine on the D. That's not it. How do you play this chord? I don't forgot it. Oh, <laughs> nine on the D, on the D, eleven on the G, eight on the B. High E is open. The A doesn't belong. Leave the A out of there. Low E. Here's one. This chord is from the beginning of Always With Me, Always With You by Joe Satriani, and it is a B add four. This is ridiculously difficult when you first start learning how to do it. So you got your low E on the on the seventh. This A string is deadened out by this finger because of that natural curve that your finger has. D on the 9, G on the 8, 5 on the B, high E is open. It's a beautiful sounding chord. I really like it. And he plays it like. Here's the hard part. To go back to it. But dude, I sat in I sat in here when I was first learning how to do that part of the song. I must have worked on that for two hours straight. Just playing through this chord. I was like, okay, I got that, and then got that. Got that. Then it came back to going back to here. I could only get this much for at first. And I was like, ah, oh, okay, start over. And then come back to it again. The way I found to transition for me was after I hit, after I hit that chord, I would go into this and then bring this finger down right as my pick's about to hit that string. And then he, he ends it with. You know, that kind of stuff. Now let's talk about something else that you can do with chords movable chord shapes. There's plenty of them out there. That, that e, my, e, e major shape. Talk correctly, instructor guy. Come on. Okay. <laughs> the E major shape. Once you learn this chord, go to town with moving it up and down the neck. Now some of it's going to sound good, some of it's not going to. Now that sounds nice. right there really sounds good leave your low E out you can bring your thumb up and make a B note but you lose that so you have to do that with a bar chord just leave your bar on the high strings leave it out leave it off and just use the tip of your finger to press that that low E on the seventh fret and you can move this everywhere Sounds pretty cool right there. Sounds pretty bad there. Now you're back an octave higher for the major shape. E major. 
Can you do that with the A minor? That one sounds nice at the fourth, a uh, sixth fret. That sounds cool. At the ninth, not so good. Yeah. Back to an octave higher. So some of it's going to sound really good. Some of it's not going to sound so good. If you want to do a G6 chord, this is beginner friendly maybe. You do the, the G major like that. Take this off. Take these take these fingers and just do away with them. And leave these two. That's G6. It's the same thing as that bar chord. Now can we do C minor in an open chord? you do that oh dude come on are you serious is that how you do it like that that's ridiculously difficult F minor I always do with a bar chord C minor I always do with a bar chord now we got one more thing to cover up here and then I'll be done with the video seventh chords there are open seventh chords that you can do up here in the what they call the money section of the guitar where you make all your money that g chord think about this g shape as being backwards so these two you have to invert your fingers to either these two fingers your bad finger and your ring finger or your pinky and your ring finger then the high e is on the first fret that's the 7 G7 I think A7 A7 A minor 7 I think that's A minor or it could be a suspended chord A minor 7 I always do like that's major Yeah, I always do the major voicing in the bar chord there. And then D7. I haven't done this chord in a long time, so bear with me. And then E7. I think goes something like... That's not 7. That's a suspended that leads back into major. E7 is that. As far as I remember. So, after you practice these chords, you get good at them. You can play anything, man. Simple man. You got C, G, and A minor. Extra intro. Metallica for Fade to Black. Let's see. I gotta remember how it goes. Once you get the chords down, the chords are what's important before you start adding into that kind of stuff into your playing. What else, man? 
Sweet Home Alabama, it's just a D chord. Here's you a ninth chord, here's you a C add nine. Third on the A, D on the two, open G string, B on the third fret, and the high E on the third. It's a C add nine, it's the same as that. So, to G. Just to get that down, man, just to do that. You get that down, it's a major step. Anything that you do on the instrument, as long as you accomplish something, even if it is just getting that to happen, it's a big step, and it's a step in the right direction. There's always time as well. Don't let your age, you know, some people think, well, I'm so late in my life that I, I can't learn to play an instrument. I don't have the time, and, and one person has told me before I'll probably be dead before I learned all this stuff. You don't have to aspire to be a guitarist or, inst or an instrumentalist to be virtuosic and master the craft. You just want to play a few chords. You know, that's all fine and dandy, man. Whatever the inspiration is, you always must follow it. See, when I, when I first started learning, I wanted to be, I was like, okay, I want to see if I can just learn something that Kirk Hammett does, you know? That was my whole reason for playing the guitar. <laughs> and the first time I learned how to do, you know, that thing, I was like, whoa, I'm doing what Kirk and James do now, and it's awesome, you know? <laughs> and it just propelled me forward and I wanted to learn and then I started learning how to read tabs got that down really well thanks to my neighbor that used to live above me here he taught me the basics sent me home with a book and said study that book and come back up here in, a, in two weeks and I want you to learn something from the book come up here and play it for me that was his direction for me and so I sat down and I did it I don't remember what it was I'm thinking it was, uh, let me put, let me put it on this. I'm thinking it was, uh, Leonard Skinner, a little bit of that. You know, and that was his, he kind of told me to, to do that. And every two weeks I had to learn something different from the book. And then I started getting all the Metallica books and easy guitar books from my local music store down here where I lived that closed down years ago. And it just sent me down this road and I found out that it was the biggest passion I've ever had. I love to play guitar. And to this day, I still have that passion. I mean, do I get to practice like I used to? Not really, no, because I work a lot, but no matter what your inspiration is, follow it. And your, your fingers are going to hurt. They are. When you're in your beginning stages of learning your chords. You know? But once you build your calluses, you can play longer. You don't feel it. As much. But I discovered, <laughs> when I was about 15 years old, I sat and practiced one day doing my bar chords when they used to sound like like that and I woke up the next morning to practice some more get going and I touched my strings like this and it felt like razor blades 
Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you know, I can't, I can't play today. Had to take a whole day off because my fingers got really tender from practicing that long. But anyway, guys, I hope this is somewhat helpful for people. Whoever sees it and glean some information from it, I hope. Thanks for watching. And please follow your inspiration and play what you want to play. Don't play what you wish you would have played or could have played. Play what you want to play. Even if it is drop D metal riffs, do it. Yeah. But I highly recommend for beginners out here. Drop tuning. Stay away from that. My buddy Josh. I taught him how to do the drop D thing. And it only takes one finger to do most of your power chords. The fundamentals are what you're going to have to learn first. Because without a solid foundation, you don't really know where you're going much in your chords, your progressions. And what better band to use to learn your chords than ACDC? I mean, seriously, those guys, their songs are full of just basic chords. Now, a lot of people give them crap, saying, you know, they're all the same, it's all the same stuff, and... Yeah, it is. But that same stuff has worked. For how many years have they been a band? You know? I mean, really. I have a book. It's a massive book of ACDC material. And it, it taught me a lot about... See, that's E. E minor. D. A. Get a little distortion on that. It's all there, man. Basic chords galore for ACDC. Another good starting point for learning when you get your chords down and you want to learn from the masters, classic rock. Learn all kinds of classic rock. Like uh, The Who, right? Behind Blue Eyes. Let's do a little of this. Oh, my blind's turned down. And let's pull that. Actually, let's pull the bridge. Leave that full. All right. chords other than this B minor bar chord so anyway guys I hope that helps and I hope you guys enjoyed take care of yourselves keep it metal out there and play your guitar always every day I want to do I do want to say something now this is not to be mean or anything like that but when it comes to practice on the guitar and someone asked you that's trying to help you to get better. You know, they're encouraging you. 
And they say, hey, man, did you practice today? And you say, no, dude, I didn't. I didn't practice because of this, this, or that. They will generally say that is an excuse. Now, they're not being mean. You don't want to make excuses as to why you didn't practice because there there is no shortcut. There are no cheat sheets when it comes to an instrument like guitar or anything. The, the result that you achieve when you're practicing is determined by how well you were able to focus on it. Quote Steve by. So, if any of your buddies are telling you, hey man, you should have practiced and they're hard on you, it's not because they, they want to bring you down and make you feel bad about yourself. It's because they want to see you get better. They want to see you succeed at it. That's what it's for. It's constructive criticism. It really is. It may not sound like it. And some guys, there's some lessons you might walk into, right? And they say, okay, you know, take this. Learn this within a week. And then you come back the next week. And they say, play me an F sharp on the B string, you know. And they... Lesson over. Go home. Get out. Because you did not come prepared. You, kn you didn't learn your lesson. And apparently, Kirk Hammett said for Satriani when he took lessons from Joe. His first lesson... To Kirk Hammett was, learn your lesson. Don't waste my time. I was like, wow. And he said, he gave me, memorize the notes on the neck and all this other stuff. I expect you to know this within a week's time. And he was like, wow, this guy's, this guy's for real. You know, there are instructors out there like that. <laughs> so anyway, guys, don't worry about people trying to encourage you to get better they're not trying to bring you down they're not trying to make you feel bad they want to see you succeed so everybody take care thanks for watching and i hope that you enjoyed